Are you ready for the heavyweight championship of the world? Are you ready? Hey, welcome to Ann in this Corner, bringing you another episode of Unanimous Decision. And today, who are we talking to, Bill? You heard what he said, Unanimous Decision. That's our exclusive interview series. And today, we are bringing you a good one. We have a guy who represents Oklahoma City, a group that came out of Oklahoma City. You know them as Color Me Bad with the number one monster smash, I Want to Sex You Up. Today, we have Mark Calderon of Color Me Bad. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Hey, welcome to the show, Mark. How you feel? Oh, man, I feel pretty good. Thanks for having me. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. uh, uh, behind the scenes, I know you said you're ready for, uh, you know, whatever we will ask. So as fans, we're going to try to uh, dive deep. We really want to um, find out about the music, find out, out, out about the differences between the industry today um, yeah, definitely versus the 90s. And um, we really want to uh, pick your brain about that. So okay. without any further ado, Bill, it's on you. All right, let's start from the beginning. Uh, Mark, coming out of Oklahoma, what was the music scene like? Oklahoma. Wow. Uh, <laughs> not a lot, not a lot going on, let me tell you. <laughs> um, all we really had was just, you know, a lot of people out here that just had dreams. And, you know, we just saw, you know, just whatever we saw on television, you know, and mm -hmm. we just seen like that's what we want to be. You know, we all had goals, uh, but we had no way out. Being here in Oklahoma, um, you know, there's no entertainment business here. Uh, the closest, I guess, may have been Dallas, maybe. But, um, man, we were just out here just trying to make it. That, that's why I think that there's so many great musicians and writers that come out of Oklahoma because there isn't a lot to do. All we can do is just, you know, uh, uh, better our craft. So, yeah, 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 man. So it was, it was tough back in the day. I mean, I can, I can assume it was. I mean, um. I've been to Oklahoma City once, <laughs> but I was I was in Wichita, Kansas, and we drove over. Yeah. Um, I think it's a mall. I don't even remember. We went to a yeah. mall there or something, yeah. but yeah, yeah. you know, I guess the thunder is there. So yeah. now, cool, the thunder. kudos, hey. kudos okay. to you. Yeah, kudos to you guys, Mark, but to make it out, because that's is, is you're basically not to say that you're an anomaly. But there is talent coming out of Oklahoma. And I know you guys were fortunate enough to make the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. How was yeah. it, uh, you know, to receive that honor? Yeah, that's nice. Man, again, man, sometimes you got I got to pinch myself because it's all a dream come true. You know, it was it was so we were so blessed to make it the, as far as we did. And, you know, we were just we were an engine. Just we all had a, the same goals to, and the same dream, man. And we were just shooting for it and no one was going to stop us. And we knew we were going to make it. We had that drive. And I think that's just with anybody and anything, anybody's got a drive of something. That's the thing, man. It just, you know, I don't know. It's something like, you know, if you got something in your heart that you want to achieve and you really put forth the effort, everything you got, God is going to intervene and make that happen. And I think that that's kind of what happened with us. You know? that's, and I would say from um, just personally speaking, when I heard you guys and I saw you guys, I didn't expect, you know, the diversity that I was mm -hmm. about to receive in the group. So yeah. I think no pun intended, but even the, the, the name of the group, you know, like it's very, it, there's some irony in that. Yeah. So um, how was it like, I mean, were fans, um, like R&B fans, did they typically embrace you guys right away or was that an uphill battle? Well, you know, a lot of people thought because uh, we got our start in New York, um, you know, what we did here in Oklahoma City is that because there was no way out, we just chased down a lot of the main acts that would come through town to do concerts, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like Tony, 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 OJs. Mm. Um, gosh, I mean, a lot of groups, man. Yeah, but it was cool in the gang who actually helped us. Uh, you know, we, we took us under their wings and they brought us to New York. So, uh, you know, from there, you know, we, everyone thought we were from New York because, you know, our video was shot from there. We recorded, I want to sex you up there. A lot of things happened. We were living in New York at the time. <clears throat> so, you know, everybody was cool with us. I think it was just a shock when everyone found out we were from Oklahoma City. They were like, what? They were like, how's that? You know, but, because we were a diverse group and 
and in all honesty, man, you know, in, in our high school, it was such a mixed group of kids. Mm-hmm. You know, we had everybody in there mm-hmm. and uh, we were just good friends and we loved to sing. And we felt like we were just as good as any of the other acts that were out there, out there at the time. We were big fans of New Edition. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to do what they were doing. Yeah. Um, so, so would New Edition be your Jackson 5 to... Well, I, I was a fan of the Jack Spy, so they're all, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, but, uh, but New Edition, they, you know, we loved what they were doing. We admired, you know, their steps, their vocals, their harmonies. Uh, their show was what was amazing at that time. I mean, they were the best. Yeah. And, um, you know, we went to several of their concerts and just, we were just blown away and inspired by them. So yeah, man, I mean, all that, the music of the eighties was amazing. I mean, you had Prince, Michael, you yeah. had New Edition, yeah. you got all the great vocalists, the Vandross, the, you Ooh. know, uh, I mean, come on, man. I mean, Freddie Jackson, you got everybody, all them great Ooh, acts. Talking, you know? you talking. You know, so uh, yeah, man. You talking. Yeah, we, we, we had some great music. I just don't know what happened. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's all good. Yeah. So, so do you? Um, I'm not sure if you know or or not, but um, do you think all for one kind of, I guess, the diversity of their group did it kind of stem from your group as well? Do you think or? I I don't know, man. I mean, you know, at that time, that was just kind of the thing that was happening. A a lot of the industry was accepting multi-racial acts, you know, after us, Uh, because that was one of our biggest issues. When we were trying to get a record deal in New York, all the record labels, they all turned us down because we didn't match what we sounded like. Mm. So they were like, how are we going to market this? You know, okay. it's not an all African American group, or it's not an all white group, or you know, it's how are we going to market this? And that was the confusing part. But you know, Giant Records, Cassandra Mills uh, took a chance on us, and you know, everything just came together. It was meant to be. So I think after that, man, a lot of things changed, and a lot of groups were able to bring in, you know, different uh, multicultural acts and whatever. Okay. It, it all worked out, man. Yeah, you're, you know, you're pioneer. You're you guys were pioneers, whether you know it or not. I I, I don't know if. I mean, I'll say it, if you if you're not, I don't know if the industry would have been that welcoming the offer one if you guys hadn't kind of like set a blueprint and uh, proof proof of concept, you know. So yeah. kudos to you guys. Yeah, well, thank you, brother. Appreciate yeah, it. you guys, you guys hit the uh, you guys hit the scene running. Like once I want to sex you up, drop. You guys like just hit the scene. Um, did you guys have any? Um, you mentioned you guys had a lot of your mentors. Uh, the 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 groups of that era, I remember, you know, the Jody C's, H-Towns. I remember watching you guys on, I think it was the Soul Train Awards. Uh, that's when Boys to Men performed and Jody C's came right after them and performed. You guys performed. Uh, H-Town, I believe they won an award that night. Um, did you guys build any personal relationships with those groups? Any of the groups? Uh- um, you know, we, we got along with uh, Boys to Men real well. Uh, we actually did some songs with them. Okay. Uh, they're really cool guys. Uh, never really connected with Joe to see or any of the other acts. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, we met them and we were cool with everybody. But yeah, Boys to Men, if anybody, you know, they were the act that we kind of, you know, knew well. Mm-hmm. I was from just look hearing your story. It seems like you guys were very good at networking. I think you guys would have did awesome in a social <laughs> media age because there's a, you mentioned a lot of groups that you guys would audition for in New York. And there's a story. I want you to kind of confirm it. The John, bon, uh, jo, uh, John Bon Jovi story. How like re- realistic is that? Or is there uh, something no, that, no, that, yeah, you know what I'm talking no, about? No, yeah. You know, we were here in Oklahoma <laughs> when that happened. Yeah, man, that, that was real. Um, you know, they, they were, they came through town uh, on their big tour, uh, Slippery When Wet tour. That was the, uh, that was their big, big tour. And they came through Oklahoma City. Uh, they were here a day before and they decided to go to the movie theater at that mall, probably that you were uh, referring to. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, um, we were told that they were there. So we all got up, you know, we went there and we caught them as they were coming out and you know that you could tell they were tired they were getting ready to go back to the hotel room and get some rest but we stopped them 
we sang for them a little acapella and uh john he was just like he was blown away by he's like man it's like man y'all sound really good mm. then, then he offered you know hey why don't you guys open up for us in front of twenty thousand people tomorrow night and you know it was like what we've never been in front of that many people <laughs> you know? especially especially us singing harmonies and and then going and doing it in front of a rock crowd i mean how's yeah. that gonna go yeah. you know so we were nervous about about that because our style wasn't rock you know our yeah. our, our sound wasn't rock mm -hmm. i mean we showed up in suits you know <laughs> Getting ready <laughs> to stage. Yeah. so but the great thing about it is is that we got up on stage man and uh, we sang about four songs everyone loved it uh the, the best part about it was after we finished our last song uh, you know, the lights came on on stage and then John and Richie came out, you know, gave us high fives and hugs and all that. And the crowd went bananas. And it was the greatest, nice. one of the greatest nights of our lives. It was great. And, nice. and at that point, you guys still aren't signed. We're not signed. Right. Uh, That's crazy. It's funny because John, believe it or not, I can remember the conversation we had with him. He was actually wanting to sign us and uh, sign us with Prince. He wanted Prince to do all of our, uh, yeah, all yeah, of our song. Yeah. He's like, I think I'm going to connect you guys with Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, now you're talking about crazy. You know, we were like, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, it just didn't work out that yeah. way, you know, and uh, Cool and the Gang, like I said, you know, they're, they're the ones that took us over. So it was, it was great, man. Yeah. It all worked out. Yeah, it did. Everything happens for a reason. I think the right producers and opportunities Mm -hmm. Landed in uh, your favor mm -hmm. to where it all worked out, like you said. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is w when did you guys know that you made it? You, we made it. We're here. Yeah, uh, man. I believe, you know, it because we were moving so fast and we didn't know. I mean, everyone was telling us how great the song was doing and how it was getting played everywhere. But you know, you kind of hear that and just keep doing what you're doing. But I think it was whenever we were walking out of a radio station one, uh, one morning, we were doing an interview at a radio station. We were, we walked out and I, and a car just drive, you know, past us, just jamming our song. I mean, blasting it. And, you know, we just, you just hear people really playing your music and it's like, yeah. wow. Okay, man, people are really liking this, <laughs> this song, you know, you know, yeah. and uh, it was, uh, it was kind of a, a reality check. And uh, we were also out on tour and we heard that we were nominated for six American Music Awards and that opened our eyes. And so we were like, okay, this is really happening. So it was wild, man. That's what's yeah. up. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Yeah. Did you, um, did you guys, uh, uh, or maybe you did, uh, did you mimic any particular singers as you were, as your, uh, your voice was maturing or? Yeah, I mean, you know, man, like I said, you know, you had the you had some of the greatest vocalists out at that time, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I always wanted to sound like my hero, Michael Jackson. I always wanted to sound <laughs> like that, you know, mimic him. But um, I don't know, man. I learned later on, you know, you just kind of have to get into your own thing, you know, mm -hmm. and um, just hearing different artists and singers. You try, you know, like Stevie Wonder. You want to hit those riffs, and and then Luther Vandross, and you know, I'm a huge Anita Baker fan. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, it's any of that, man. Any of that we took in to try to make it, you know, our own. So. And uh, I, I'm, that brings me to my next point. I think uniqueness matters when when you're dealing with music and. Um, Legend has it, Dr. Freeze actually wanted to give I Want to Sex You Up to Bell Biv DeVoe, probably Keith Sweat, or probably Christopher Williams, and it ended up in your lap. Personally, yeah. I don't know if those guys <laughs> would have been able to yeah. do it justice. Yeah. But um, yeah, like, so I mean, what was the thought behind that? Like, somebody's presenting you a record that some of your favorite artists are passing up on. Were you even excited about it? Well, well, at that time, we didn't know because we were in the studio with uh, Stanley Brown and uh, Dr. Freeze. Uh, so, okay, so what happened was uh, Gary Harris, who is a legend in the industry, man, he, he, he helped create a lot of great big hits for a lot of acts. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on the project, on the New Jack City project, and they were trying to put it all together. And Gary Harris brought uh, to Oklahoma, because we were in Oklahoma at that time, he brought Dr. Freeze and Stanley Brown 
down and we got with Stanley Brown because we were big fans of Stanley. Um, we started recording the song, I'm Dreaming. And as we were recording, I'm Dreaming, it wasn't clicking with us. It wasn't vibing with what- The like, Christopher Williams song, right? Yeah, the Christopher Williams song, right? Okay. So yeah, we were singing that song first. So they had, what? they basically had all the possible songs for the new Jack City album, but they were testing it out with different artists, I guess. Maybe, maybe that was yeah. it. But so, so what happened was, is that um, um, we were singing I'm Dreaming and we were like, man, this is a great song, but it's not clicking of who we are. So mm -hmm. we went into the lobby and we talked to Gary Harris and we said, Gary, we like I'm Dreaming, we like the song and everything, but it's just not, it's not clicking. It's not, we're not, we're not, there's no chemistry with us in the song. Mm -hmm. And then he said, hey, uh, Gary Harris, he said, well, hey, Freeze, uh, Giving that six, uh, playing that sex you up joint, you know, <laughs> and and uh, you know, all Freeze had was just the uh, the ooze and the hook, and he had the music. Uh, he didn't have any lyrics or anything like that. Um, so I heard, I actually heard the song first because we had to listen to it through headphones, and I remember mm -hmm. being the first one to hear it. It blew me away. I was like, okay, I'm liking this guy. <laughs> this is it right here, you know. Yeah. So everyone else listened to the song after that and everyone was feeling it. So uh, I think what happened was Dr. Freeze left us the, uh, the cassette was a cassette <laughs> and he left us to, to write to. So mm -hmm. that's why there's two versions of, I want to set you up because we had our mm -hmm. own version, which went on the new Jack city soundtrack and yep. Dr. Freeze had his own version and both versions did extremely well. Yep. So, you know, that's kind of mm -hmm. how that happened, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, Dr. Freeze, uh, he gave us a track, we wrote to it. And I'm gonna be honest, after recording that record, no one liked the song. We played it for everybody. We had it in our back pocket for about like six months and we played it for everybody and their mothers and no one like, no one really went crazy over it or anything. So we were like, okay, well, you know, at least we'll be on the soundtrack. So yeah. Sorry to interrupt Mark, but can you share the information that we were talking about, Bill, prior? Like a critic said some harsh words. Yeah, it's like they they, they ranked it. <laughs> At the time, a critic a critic ranked it what, Bill? It's like ranked number 40th out of 50 of the worst songs. Oh, at the okay. yeah, what so are you, what, I don't know what y'all listening to, but young kids <laughs> like we all listening to. <laughs> we adults, adults probably didn't like it, but I think with um kids, it was getting us in trouble. I I, I listened to the song Blasting It, yeah. and in um that year, I'm probably like in the second grade. You guys got me in trouble, so I I understand why you were meant to some like met with some harsh criticism, uh, but I think the streets knew. That was a bop. Like. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, th they didn't want the word sex out yeah. there, you know, on the yep. radio waves. Um, mm -hmm. But it happened. Uh, everyone loved it. Uh, people didn't, you know, people were trying to keep it down. But every, man, you just can't, when a song's a great song and a classic, you can't you stop, can't stop it. it. You can't stop it. And that's Dang. why it, after 31 years, they're still playing it. You know, yeah. they're still playing yeah. it. So, and I get to tour with it. I get to go all over the world singing it. So, yep. you know, you know, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, they criticize Prince and Michael on a lot of different things also, but still they yeah. are who they are and yeah. mm -hmm. they've got great music and they still are legends as they are. So it's, it is what it is, man. Yeah. I mean, you know. I think, I think you, you guys have, uh, eventually, I think the, um, the song was welcomed by fans. And I think, um, all to this day, like you said, you're able to tour off of it. History speaks for itself. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's all that matters. Yeah. So yeah. being being on the soundtrack, um, you're you're you guys have Keith Sweat on there. You got Christopher Williams, Queen Latifah, True. Yeah. Levert. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have some heavyweights. Oh man. I on know. there. I know. But guy was. You on know, there. we kind of were talking. You guys kind of had the biggest song on there. Yeah. So how does that yeah. how does that <laughs> how does that make you feel or made you guys feel or whatever, knowing that you basically had the biggest song on the album as the as newbies going yeah. up against the the Jared Leverts and you know these other guys, these heavyweights, uh, guys I mean, on there. Yeah, man. It just you just 
you never know. You just never know when a hit's going to take over like that. Mm. No matter who's singing it, it's a hit. A hit's a hit, you know? And I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it just <laughs> happened that way. You know, what, what do you do? You know, um, you just take it, you run with it and you mm-hmm. be thankful and you try to make as much money as you can on it. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it was truly a, 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 a um, crazy because we were such big fans of Guy. We were oh, big man. fans of uh, Keith Sweat, Troop. I mean, we mm-hmm. love Troop. You yeah. know, they were, they were, man, those guys were amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. So, and, and, you know, they got the Leverts and all that. So, yeah, so we're big fans of all these acts. And we, we've seen them all in concert, you know, as, as, as high school uh, uh, students. So um, it was just an honor just to be on that soundtrack. And then when our song took off the way it did, you just take it and you just try to make the best of it, man. And try yeah. to keep, you know, keep, 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 you know, keep moving up forward. And, and I thought we did a pretty good job of that. It, it's know? funny because of how big that song was, we saw that you spent many weeks at number two but didn't hit number one, mm-hmm. but then Mia Moore hit number one. Yeah. So Barry and I were going back and forth. Well, which one is the bigger song or more uh, success, more successful song? Let's say that. Sex you up, you know? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what so, we said. Yeah. So during, so during those days, uh, Billboard, they would chart the song by uh, the sales and by radio play. Okay. And if a record company had enough money to pay Billboard under the table to keep their record from being to, yeah. you know, to stay yeah. at number one, they could do that. You know, yeah. money comes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it so, does. You know, so I think there may have been a little bit of that going on because Sex You Up at that time was it just took over. Man. It was a giant. You know, it took over and it went number one all over the world except here in the U.S. So, it's you know, crazy. that's what I'm saying. I, you know? so, funny, st- funny story. My um, my stepmom was from um, Martinique, and I was listening to a notarized countdown. Like, remember when BT used to do the notarized countdowns? Like, mm-hmm. and you guys were on there, and I'm singing it, and she like, they stole... They stole um the song from my country. I said, nah, this is the original. <laughs> so, and she's, she's from Martinique. So, it shows that... Everybody overseas knew the record. So that was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, now, here's the thing. So you guys come up in an era where Bill mentioned some of the groups, the troops, the color me bads, the offer ones. Mm-hmm. And then even when you kind of like backtrack to the 80s, just a lot of R&B talent coming out towards the, I want to say late 90s. You guys are kind of like the last of a dying breed. Maybe Drew Hill after you guys. But for the most part, groups stop. So when you cut, co- like when you look at, like how R&B groups are dismantled is most of that industry or most of that just, um, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope I answered this right, but you know, music was changing so quickly during those days, you know, you had a collision on the radio waves. You had, um, you know, R&B music. And then, and then you had from Seattle, you had that big grunge wave. You know, that rock, you know, Nirvana, mm-hmm. yeah. Pearl mm-hmm. Jam and those people, they were coming into the scene. And then, and then the rap, the gangster rap, the content, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg was coming from this side. And it was just, man, it was just like, you know, what's the sound? Who's, yeah. who, you know, what sound are we going to follow? And slowly but surely, you know, it started dying out. We slowly started dying out. And 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 the gangster rap was huge. The the Dr. Dre's and the Snoop Dogs of the world. I think R. Kelly was really uh, making a big uh, 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 coming strong at that time with Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then of course grunge music just kind of started taking over the airwaves. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, uh, you know, it's just it's just funny how those things happen, man. I mean, you know, I don't. It was a tough time. I know you had the uh, the Britney Spears, and then that whole Backstreet and NSYNC was really making their way through. Yeah, you know, uh, in the late '90s, you know. So, uh, and I, I, you just couldn't compete with those guys, man. I remember it was funny because um, I remember doing a show where uh, uh, NSYNC was opening up for us, and then I swear to you, two months later, we were opening up for NSYNC. <laughs> you know that what I, mean? Yeah. I mean, the music just switched. Yeah, you know? that quick. That quick. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like now 
on our second and third album, we may have gotten away from our sound. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe happened. We got away from our sound and we probably should have just stuck with Dr. Freeze. We probably should have just wrote it out and still stuck with uh, Howie T and Dr. Freeze. And I think we would have been okay because I think we would have eventually found another hit. Uh, you know, I, yeah. We probably, some, but some some of that is, uh, I think the industry kind of turned its back on New Jack Swing. And I, I personally believe mm. good music is timeless to where um, the industry kind of forced acts to like give up on New Jack Swing. And if you see with like Silk Sonic and, you know, Bruno Mars, they, they still do New Jack Swing. So, but um, even Dr. Freeze, I noticed he had like that wave and then he just stopped, you know, like I, I feel like the industry stopped rocking with him. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Dr. Freeze went, uh, went working with Michael Jackson. Mm. Uh, he did a lot of songs with Michael, and mm. uh, he did Break a Dawn. And mm. then, oh, that is uh, that's okay. Yeah, that's Doctor Freeze. Okay, yeah. and then he also did. Uh, 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 he did several songs with Michael after that. Right. But uh, he actually started singing a lot of Michael Jackson's backgrounds. I don't know. I mean, I'm just mm. gonna give you a little insight, but you know, because I still talk to Freeze. Okay, um, and I still right. talk to him, and <laughs> and. Uh, so, you know, he still, he, he sends me a lot of songs that uh, he wanted to give to Michael. And there's some bad songs, man. I'm talking mm. about Michael, but Michael turned them all down, you know, just like he turned down Pharrell's and yeah, all yeah. these other great hits, um, <laughs> you know, but, um, but uh, I heard some stuff. And, and uh, if you listen to Break of Dawn, all them backgrounds, that's Dr. Free. I, I didn't even know he was talented like that. Yeah, I mean, vocally, yeah. I I, yeah. I liked him on the um, uh, production side. I didn't know he yeah, was bringing yeah. vocals yeah. like that. Well, yeah. So he, what happened was Michael sent him to a vocal teacher and I guess really? like a vocal teacher to learn how to sing like him. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> wow. because he really has that sound. If you go listen, like after this interview, put on Break of Dawn, uh, Break okay. Till Dawn. And listen to the backgrounds, and that's Dr. Freeze singing. Got it queued up. I, actually, actually, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, on Poison, the backgrounds on Poison, that's Dr. Freeze too. Really? Uh, all that. That's the Dr. stuff Freeze. you, Bill. The stuff the we stuff, learn. Hey, and this is why we love having these interviews because we <laughs> learn so many yeah. inside information. Yeah, <laughs> and so I'm, much I'm, intel, man. Like, yeah, this is yeah. great. Like, I'm. I, I've heard poison. How many times have I heard poison? I can't even tell you. Yeah. And to know that, like you just said, Dr. Freeze song, song that part. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, that's what he that's what he told me. So you know, <laughs> I sang all them backgrounds, you know. Okay. Now give him his flowers. Hey, uh flowers. Mark. So Bill just mentioned it. How much times have we heard some of these classics? Probably over a million, right? I'm not keeping track, but so when you come out with hits as big as I Want to Sex You Up, I Adore Me and More, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm leaving some off. I'm leaving some on the table. But is it difficult for you, uh, like for you guys to release new music because fans are so accustomed to like wanting to hear classics? Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just it's, you know, it's just like a new day. You know, the mm -hmm. record labels. They they like the young acts, man. That they, they, they you know <laughs> they don't want to mess with the old dudes anymore. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. You know, it's it's a whole new set of people working the game now. They don't even know me. The people running this the, the music industry don't even know who Color Me Bad is, man. It seems like you know it's it's just a whole nother sound, whole nother game, and and it everything's different. You know that's why I love Bruno Mars and, and, and Silk Sonic is because they, they still keeping the sound alive, man. Mm -hmm. And I can really appreciate that. I, those guys, Bruno Mars, just, he's just a freaking genius, man. Yeah, and yeah. He does it right, you know, and um, it just blows me away how he's kept that alive. I, I don't know. Uh, um, I just released the song under Company Bad. I know where you're going. Like, I, 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 was, I was careful the way I was going to bring this up because you mentioned Bruno. <laughs> I did it. Uh -huh. And I, when I when I hear California Dreaming, uh -huh. it sounds to me it's like wow, yeah. you know they still pay respect to that, you know that seventies R and B soul. It's and I, it's, it's it's to me, it's vibe. something similar to how Bruno yeah. Mars finds a way to make, you know, um, brings respects to classics. Love and Frank. I get that vibe when I'm listening to California Dreaming. And the uh -huh. fact that you answered that, I think yeah. I'm like okay, so he kind of feels it too. That's wonderful. So yeah. hey. Tell us, a, tell us a little bit about California Dreaming. 
Man, I okay. So what happened was is that uh, uh, my DJ who performs with me, um, we had a show in Santa Barbara, California, and my DJ couldn't make it. So I'm sitting here trying to think, who do I know out in California that that could DJ my show? So um, I thought about this one guy named DJ Kazell, and I contacted him. He's a DJ out in Los Angeles. He, he DJs all the big shows, and he said, uh, "I said, hey, hey, Kazell, could you?" Uh, uh, be my DJ on, on this date out in Santa Barbara. He goes, yeah, man, I, I, I can, absolutely. He said, hey, Mark, but I, I wanna know, are you still writing songs? And I was like, yeah, of course, I'm always writing songs, sure. He said, I'm gonna send you a track and, and let me know, you know, see if you can come up with anything. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool, man. So he sends me this track, I start playing it. And, you know, I'm a sucker for the old classics, you know? Yeah. And that's what the, the, the instruments, they were like instruments, they had a vibe uh, of, of something 70s. <laughs> and I thought, mm -hmm. myself, man, this is kind of like, like, this is a kind of a Marvin Gaye kind of thing happening here. I don't know, something's going on. But I was like, what can I put to it? And then, you know, I started, I started you know, the melodies started playing around with the melodies and then, all of a sudden, man, I just started latching on to a mel melody. And I, I I wrote the song like within a, a day and a half, two days. And, okay. uh, you know, I went and recorded it and uh, I sent it over to Cassell and he loved it, man. He was like, oh man, this is gonna be great, man. We're we gonna get this thing, you know, mixed and all that. And, uh, you know, we got it mixed and uh, we put it out there and we're getting a lot of love from it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a vibe. But, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, seen the video have you absolutely yep. Yeah, yep. yeah so we were trying to keep that old vibe going on with it and and uh it, it was great man it, it really came alive and and uh i knew something like that could work you know because uh, uh people were digging what what bruno mars was doing yeah. so i was like let me, let me go ahead and just put some of this old classic r&b on it so mm -hmm. and, and it worked out man so that was good no i mean it's it's a great vibe it definitely gives you a California feel. Yeah. The low riders or whatever. You know, you got, <laughs> hey, I just came from California out in uh, June. So I definitely can appreciate the song and the video. So, yeah. I mean, kudos to you. I mean, they, that was a great choice for you to go with that song. And again, thank you for bringing that to our attention because, you know, we need to, we need to celebrate um, good music. Yeah. You know, I, I'm tired of selling, I'm tired of hearing, just whatever is on the radio and it's like a quick microwave song. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear good music. And I think that's why a lot of people are latching on to Bruno Mars and Silk Sonic because they're giving you that old, they're giving you music. Yeah. It, you know, music. It, it, it touches the soul. It touches the spirit. You know, you can really feel the music, the live instruments. Uh, that's one of the great things about some of those old R&B groups, man. It's more than just a song. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, it, there, there's something there, man. Something that, that really touches the soul. And mm -hmm. that's why you can relate. That's why it makes you feel good. You know, it feels a certain way. And that's what it's about, man. You know, that's what music is to me. It makes me feel a certain way. And, um, you know, whether if it's a love song or something like, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a sucker like for old classics, man. Marvin mm -hmm. Gaye and all the great artists like that. I love Motown. I love that whole sound, man. And, and uh, the Philadelphia sound. Um, mm. I'm a, I'm, I love all of it, man. That's, I love yeah. harmonies. I love yeah. harmony. I yeah. love the song. Yeah. So. yeah. So when you, um, do you get that same excitement from, for, from touring now that you did, you know, back when you guys first started? I, I do. And I'm going to tell you why, because my, my, uh, um, my position has changed in the group. You know, um, I always was just singing backgrounds and harmonies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now things are different, you know, with me being the only original uh, member left yeah. and uh, the sole owner of Color Me yeah. Bad. Yeah. Um, I'm out there singing all the lead vocals and I'm, I'm having, I'm like a kid again, man, mm -hmm. on stage, okay. you know, because it's just not out there doing what I had always done. It's doing something new and getting a whole nother uh, perspective from the stage and connecting with the audience in a different way. So yeah, so that's, that's the beauty about this. I still get to go out after 31 years and get to perform these songs and people are having a good time. 
dancing, singing along, yeah, showing yeah. the love, giving the love back, the appreciation. It's amazing, man. I, I can't complain, man. It's just the greatest thing. I mean, we, I follow you or, you know, we, we follow the channel follows you, uh, Instagram and so forth. And man, we just seeing you doing all your performances and the crowds rocking with you. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I, I try to follow all the groups, uh, follow the Jets and watching them perform and the crowd erupts when they're singing their song. <laughs> singing their song. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you can't, I think these are just different episodes or different parts of our lives as we were growing up. As Barry stated, he was in, I think you said second grade, Barry? Yeah, I was in you second grade when I first, yeah, when I got in Yeah, so, so you were in second grade, I was in high school, <laughs> you know? So Barry and I, we have like a 10, 10 year gap, age gap. But, um, you know, he's listening at it and he's understanding the music. I'm understanding it from a different point because I grew, I'm in the sauce in the middle of the song as I'm a teenager and so forth. So, you know, when I hear a, I want to sex you up and I see a Mark saying, hey, yeah, I'll do the interview. I'm, you know, we're taken back because, man, you guys are our celebrities. Like, we would never, ever think that we'd be able to talk to you guys and interview you guys and, you know, interviewing a troop and interviewing a Stevie D from uh, Force MDs. And yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, we, we're just so appreciative of, of you guys. I appreciate that, man. Those are great guys. You know, those <laughs> yeah. are all great. I know I've met them all. And they're all good people, man. And they very talented people. And, uh, you know, for some days, man, uh, again, like I was in high school seeing them because they opened up for New Edition on that Awful Love Tour, I remember. Mm. And, uh, you know, of course, they had their big hit, Tender Love, which mm -hmm. was one of my favorite all-time songs, I should say. Quiet Storm yeah. Classic. Huh? It's a Quiet Storm Classic. Oh, and, and, and by the way, Mark, when we talked to John John and we were, we asked a similar question, or were there any groups that you guys connected with? He mentioned something about like um, he saw one of you, like one of you guys backstage, and um, the camaraderie was there, the respect was there. So the fact yeah. that you brought him up in this interview without us yeah. having to like bring that up, it just shows that huge camaraderie around R and B groups. That John John is probably one of the most nicest people you'll ever meet. That guy is such a <laughs> he's, he's just such a good soul, man. Yeah, such yeah. a good soul. Yeah. Um, all those guys, man, are really. Yeah. Great. Man, I haven't really met anybody that's got a that's got a bad vibe out there. Really, I mean, I've been fortunate not to, but everyone's been really cool with us. So yeah, legend has it everyone that was on the uh, New Jack uh, City soundtrack, they're stand up guys. So keep yeah. that up. <laughs> um, all right, so hey, we we're interested in the new music. I, I definitely want to urge our fans, hey, go check out California Dreaming. Please follow Mark on social media. Mark, where can they find you at? Uh, you can really, man, you can know anything and everything about the group uh, at colormebad.com. So, awesome. you know, go check us out there. We're on social media. You can actually find us uh, on all this uh, through colormebad.com. You can find all the, uh, the different address for Instagram, which is uh, Color Me Bad Music. And uh, you can follow me, Mark Calderon, on uh, mm -hmm. Facebook. So you can follow us, you know, wherever, but hit, hit us up at colormebad.com and you can check out the history page, uh, the tour date page. You can check out all the photos that we uh, 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 take with the fans that we upload on the, on the, uh, the site. You know, so check us out, man. We'd we'll, we'll, we'll love to see you. Yeah, yeah, stay connected, guys. Uh, support them. I mean, we're me and Bill, we're fans of R&B. And uh, Mark is definitely you know, <laughs> pushing the agenda to get good music out there. So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, man. I, so now, where are you guys? Where are you guys located? Uh, Florida. Florida. What, what about what, what part? I'm, I'm from Tampa. Fort Lauderdale, but I'm in Central Florida, which is right yeah. outside Orlando. And I'm in uh, Tampa. You're in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, man. Um, there's a show that's coming up what? in November. All right, okay. it's gonna be a big show. You guys, yeah. gonna want, you guys I'm, are both gonna want to go to this show. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna come but check you out. Go ahead. I can't. I can't announce it. Not on air. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because it's, not, it's <laughs> not finalized. All right. Well, yeah. uh, he, it sounds like he's gonna give us some hits after the yeah. show, and I, yeah. I, I we'll keep our lips up. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, um, hey, Bill, we got one of, uh, and, like you heard me say it. I said, it's my favorite song from one of my uh, top three favorite he soundtracks. He definitely said that. He definitely so, said um, it. So we were able to interview the best song on that soundtrack. <laughs> one of the singers of the best song. Um, I do want to um, say, hey, Bill, there's some people that we're leaving out. Who do we interview next? How do the fans get a say so in that? Uh, you know what to do. Go to the comment section. We renamed that as my two cents and leave us your two cents. Who do you guys want to see us interview? Hey, man, we're out here trying. We're trying. We're giving you color me bad. I want to sex you up. We gave you tender love with uh, four these. What, what else you want us to give? You know, we give you guys everything we can, but just keep the comments going. Please, please, please make sure you guys follow color me bad. Follow Mark. Man, these guys are 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 great, and uh, again, great, just great people, man. Just just great spirits, great souls, and um, just follow the guys and support. Just support your artists who are giving you great music. All right, and, and guys, do that. Make sure you do that. And on the screen, make sure to follow us to stay intact with what we got going on. Outside of that, peace. Peace.